Genshin Impact's character designs are detailed and fascinating to me. Have you been wondering about what goes into their designs or do you want to learn more about character design in general? Then this video will hopefully be of help to you. In today's video I show you a guide to designing Genshin Impact characters. I share what I got out of learning from the designs. For this I break down Genshin Impact character designs and define steps you can take to design and what to consider when designing characters. And if you're interested in seeing me apply these steps myself, you can look forward to my future videos. Videos. For now let's start with the analysis and breakdown part. I share the steps I determined from looking at the designs and researching and here I also include examples using one character in Genshin Impact. Alright, when it comes to the steps, we start with the idea. First of all, I mentioned that you could completely come up with this on your own, research and then develop an idea, or start with an idea and then develop it through research or research for an idea, but then come up with things on your own. Most of the time you have a combination of both. It could also be that throughout the process of designing, the idea will develop. And here you can start off with a one sentence or three word description of your character and then think more about the idea, explore it and write a small description. Here are some questions to answer in your description of your character. First will be some general ones and here I would also like to mention that since I have a lot of things I would like to include in this video I won't read out everything but instead put up things on screen. This way you can read through them and feel free to take screenshots and use them as small guides. And next would be some Genshin specific questions and finally a few optional ones. A fun idea to determine a character's region or vision would also be to take some Genshin quizzes. There are many quizzes which tell you which vision you would have in the Genshin universe and which region you would live. And if you imagine you were taking the quiz as the character, you can determine your character's region or vision that way. Now I want to show how this idea step would be applied with the example of one Genshin character. For this I chose Kaya. I think most people know him and have probably seen him since he's one of the first characters you meet in Genshin and he was playable from release on. And a free word description for him would be a eccentric pirate captain. And since we're talking about Genshin Impact, an anime game, most characters would also have pretty, cute, beautiful or even hot or handsome in the description. Kaya has a mischievous, charming, mysterious, confident and strategic person. He's a cavalry captain of Mondstadt. He likes to go to the bar and drink. He also likes to talk and put people in challenging situations. And a bit about his lore and backstory. This is also a bit of a spoiler here in case you don't know about Kaya's backstory yet. For him he's rather exotic. He's not originally from Mondstadt. He's a former citizen of Canria. He has also a tragic past. Lost his father as well as his new adoptive father. He got scarred by his adoptive brother and he's torn between serving his duty as agent for Canria or birth father who had ruthlessly abandoned him and investigate Mondstadt or he could serve Mondstadt where he gets treated with kindness so he has these opposing demands of loyalty and duty. He lives in Mondstadt, a city that symbolizes freedom. He has a cryovision which shows his inner conflict. He is a sword fighter and has the tall male body type. Also about his constellation is the power oculus, a peacock which fits to him being exotic, a eccentric beautiful type of character and other captain of pirate characters in Genshin like him would be Beidou, other confident charismatic characters would be Ayato, Lisa and Yedan. Another mysterious character would also be Albedo and another eccentric character would be Mona. All of these things is what make Kaya's character stand out. He is a pirate who is charming like Beidou but then also mysterious and charming like Lisa, Yedan and Ayato for example. Alright, that's it for step 1, next is step 2. Now that you've established the idea, it's time to think about how you can represent who your character is in their design. For this, it's good to gather references. Here's what you can include in your references. You can go for images of clothing pieces and accessoires. For this, you can be inspired by the general Genshin visuals. Most Genshin characters have some common things included in their designs. And then you can also look into the region and what the clothing style is like in the character's region. And the regions are mostly inspired by real life time periods or different parts of the world, so you can also look more into this. And I'm also putting up a list of some of the city's unique design elements here. Then you can also look into the meaning behind different materials like fabrics, gems or metals fitting to the character. You can also show their wealth this way, for example. Then you can go into the meaning behind symbols, flowers, objects and patterns and make them fit to the character. And also look into the job, profession, the role, the interests and personality and the constellation of the character. You can also look into all these things. And you might also want to include specific hairstyle or eye references here. Then you can also look more into the mood, vibe and the color palette of the 
character and images all fitting to your idea. It's good to pay attention that you have a balance of functionality, practicality and historical things, which means including pieces that would make sense for the character and since they're a Genshin character, also kind of a fighter character, so they should for example be able to move freely since they're running a lot. Make sure that the clothing pieces make sense and for this you can be inspired by real life. But then for your balance the other side would also be fantasy, ethereality and fictional things, which means including pieces that make the design more visually appealing, unique and otherworldly. The mood board and your references should overall show information about your character through visual storytelling. So this second step is all about creating reference boards. You could also separate your references into aesthetic ones, which convey the feeling, the atmosphere and the color palettes for example, and then fashion ones, which show the real world application. Now for how I would apply this step for Kaya. References I would include in a mood board for a character like him would be references for Mondstadt and Mondstadt has a European origin and you can look more into European historical fashion here and also Mondstadt for example has a lot of dagger, spearhead or triangle shapes in the design and he's also not originally from Mondstadt so showing his exoticness is also good through some exotic clothing so putting a twist on the casual Mondstadt style. For example something Kenria related, the place he's originally from would be a four-shaped diamond and then to show his exoticness you also have some fur and leather and also this kind of butterfly and peacock inspired design elements since he's also the cavalry captain including some pirate inspired references makes sense as well and you can also find the Kenria four star diamond shape by Kaya's iris and for the mood or vibe as well as the color palette since Kaya's a cryo character fitting to this we have a blue and purple color palette with some black white and gold parts. Then for the functionality part we have tight pants, sturdy boots, gloves and shoulder armor. And then for the fantasy part we have the flowy big cape and some of his accessories. And now we're moving on to step 3 and we finally get to actually draw. This would be blocking in the basic silhouette and shapes. First you can start off with the shapes and blocking in the silhouette of the outfit parts. This way you don't get caught up in the details and can make variations quickly. And this step will be all about the first draft for the whole character with their outfit. However, this also depends on your own preferences. If you like to, for example, directly sketch an outfit pieces and figure things like the silhouette and shapes along the way, you can also use that approach. It's just good to make sure your character has a unique striking silhouette and nice shapes in their design. You can go from big to small, starting off with the cut of the outfit and ending with the details. For drawing the outfit for the first time, you can use a base drawing of the character or just a basic silhouette of their body to draw on top of. And first you can establish the shapes you want to include and determine a ratio for your character for shapes you want to combine. Then you can use this in their design for the big shape as well as the accessoires. You can also combine shapes to come up with new ones here. It's good to make sure you have some big, medium and small shapes and for Genshin characters, flowiness is often used in their design as well and the shapes should fit to the vision and the personality of the character and from this and the reference board you can block in the outfit without any details and it's also good to do this in just values, meaning only in black and white. This way you can already determine the contrast in your outfit and it's easier to make variation since you're not yet overwhelmed with colors and yeah here you can just make some variation how many you want to depends on you and you can ask yourself questions like which version has a strong silhouette and interesting shapes and a nice spread of big medium and small shapes and most importantly what version do you like most and fits to your character if you find it difficult to imagine how the designs would work for the character you can also draw it in different poses showing how the character would interact with the world with the outfit on and applying step 3 for Kaya. Kaya is a rather dynamic character. His design includes many triangular shapes. A lot of them are rounded, making him appear less intimidating or evil. For Kaya's outfit, it has more volume at the top and less at the bottom. You have some asymmetry through the coat and a half teardrop shape. And yeah, here I also want to mention that asymmetry is often used in Genshin character designs. And for the values, you have most contrast around the upper part of Kaya's outfit with his darker hair and the brighter parts. The ends of his hands or legs are pretty much dark when you look at his outfit. Now we are done with step 3 and step 4 would be the first color block in. However, changing up the whole order or leaving out some steps like the silhouette or first color block in can technically also work depending on your own preferences. And for the color block in, you can do this by first coming up with a color palette on the side of your character and then painting over parts of your silhouette to separate the outfit parts. Then you can use color blocking to divide up the costume. Think about the ratio of colors here and use your reference board. Here are some guides for coming up with a color scheme and assigning colors to 
to parts of the outfit. You can start off with the primary color and often this is determined by the vision of the character and for Genshin character designs but it can also be contrasting to it and usually you would use the primary color often also in slightly different shades and saturations for around 40 to 60 percent of the character's colors in their design and often for Genshin character designs this will be paired with black or white or both and some characters will have mainly black or white but also some primary color in their design as well. After the primary color and some black and white parts you would also go for a secondary accent color often which is added for visual interest and finally you can also add in opposing pops of colors for accents or details. It's good to have the face stand out overall meaning you have a lot of contrast around the face. Even though all characters have gold and silver somewhere you will never see this being the primary color for Genshin character designs. Gold or silver is used for the accessoires and not a big outfit piece. You can already decide if you want to include gold or silver or both types of accessoires for your character design. Often this can be influenced by the overall colors you're already using which often helps to decide what fits better. Just as a side note, Kokomi or Razor would be two characters that have almost no gold or silver apart from their vision in the designs but yeah most Genshin characters will have especially gold in their design. Since you know that some parts will be gold and silver you can also only think about adding these in the end if you don't want any big parts to be in this color. Now let's see how the color block would apply for Kaya. As mentioned for the reference board, the colors for him would be mostly blue and purple with some black, white and gold parts, fitting to him being a cryo character. And the colorful parts would be his chest around his head, his arms and his belt and the belts on his arm. The ratio for the colors in Kaya's design would be around two thirds black and one third white and blue and purple parts. And for accent colors you would have brown and bright blue here. After the first block in of the silhouette, shapes and colors, it's now time to draw the outfit on a basic front-on pose of your character or a character sheet if you have one. If you want to, you can also include a side and back view. This is good to understand how the outfit works and make sure it has a good spread of elements overall, having some parts with more and some with less detail. And here it's time to also use your reference board again, especially the specific pieces of clothing you included should be helpful here. You can determine what cut you want to use for the upper and lower body, as well as what kind of material the clothing pieces should be made up of. For some Genshin designs you will also have a layering of outfit parts. Here at this stage just think in bigger parts at first like I would like to include a shirt, a jacket, pants or a dress, a skirt, a cape, hat, shoes and socks and then you can start with the shirt and pants for example and then add a jacket on top or you start with a corset and then add a cape and make sure you portray each outfit part and their material authentically. For this you need to at first understand what clothing piece you are portraying and how the material looks. You also have to pay attention to this and refine this when coloring and shading later. And it's good to have the outfit parts be connected to who the character is and make sense for them. For example, using shorter and cuter cuts for more playful childlike characters and longer flowy capes for more mature story characters makes sense here, but you will overall also see that mixing both of these will work really well for many characters. It also makes sense to include the hairstyle here since it's pretty important and it helps to make sure it fits with the overall outfit. Here's how this step would apply for Kaya and what parts are included in his basic outfit design. You have a black corset overall underneath, then you have grey pants, boots, a white shirt that goes until the waist, you have a blue butterfly corset like shirt around his torso, a purple cape, a white fur and cape and the materials included in his outfits parts would be simple fabric, leather like fabric, fur and gold and possibly a bit of wood for the accessoires on the gloves and you can have the outfit parts be connected to who the character is. Kaya has this flowy cape which shows that he's mature but his design also includes more playful elements like a short shirt, a revealing chest and it also looks more eccentric through the fur. For his hairstyle we have some asymmetry with the long ponytail on one side and this overall also looks kind of exotic again. Now that we've established a base for the outfit, it's time to add in accessoires. These make most Genshin characters really stand out. First of all, it's good to keep in mind that the accessoires should fit to the character. Again, use your reference board here. You can show your character's interests, personality, job, role and quirks through this. By for example, including sentimental jewelry or functional items like glasses or a bag. You can pay attention to the shapes. Often you'll have the same shape repeated multiple times in different sizes throughout the character design. And most characters have around 5 to 10 shapes or patterns 
in der Design. And here's a list of some common accessories included in kitchen character designs. The accessories can be made up of regular fabric, metal, like gold, or also gemstones. These often have a meaning behind them. If you find a gemstone that could work for the Genshin universe and fits to your character, think about including it in your design. For example, the jade in outfit parts for Zhao's design would stand for longevity. And you can also ask yourself the question what's common in the region and fits to the vision of the character. And also, at this point, um, it's good to make sure that you have a vision for your character somewhere, because each Genshin character, yeah, they have a vision somewhere, so this is also a fun accessoire to include. Often you will find small accessoires placed on the outer sides of the sleeves, around the cut of the shirt in front, at ends of capes or around the belt of the character designs, and make sure you don't have detail everywhere that it's spread out, but overall for Genshin character designs you will have a lot of detail compared to many other fandoms, and often asymmetry is used to place the details. Also, most Genshin characters have some flowy parts like capes or sleeves, so in case this wasn't included in your initial outfit and silhouette, you can think about adding this with the accessories here. I mean, it makes sense to include these parts to me, it just makes all movements of the characters look more pleasing to the eye. Something else to include here would be patterns. These are often used on outfit sleeves, a longer dress or a cape, and here you can include shapes and patterns that fit to the rest of the character design. At this stage, it also makes sense to think about design of your character's weapon if you want to include this in their design. And once again, here are the accessories for Kaya's design. What really stands out here would be his eye patch, which shows some mystery and symbolizing that he hides his past or a part of his identity and his connection to Kandria. This eye patch also has a connection to his backstory and past, since he has been scarred at his eye by his adoptive brother. And then you have several dagger-shaped and spear-shaped accessoires, and he also wears gloves with some star patterns on them. Many small shapes are added here as well. And here would also be where the accessoires are placed. On the left side, you have the arms, the legs, the shoe. On the right side, the arms, the hip, the shoe. And for the front, you have accessoires at the upper body and at the lower legs. And for the back, you have accessoires at the upper color. And at the lower end, you also have the shoes with some gold there. For the upper body, you have almost symmetry in the design, except for the cape and the blue accessoire wrapped around the upper arm. And then you have gloves that are almost identical, but on the right side you have a bit more accessoires. Mm -hmm. And for his symmetry or asymmetry in the design, you can see how on the left side you have the eye patch, and on the right side the earring, then on the left side the fur coat, on the right side his hair or also the hip accessoire. On the right side you also have one additional small band around his wrist. And when you look at him from the back, for the asymmetry you just have the longer white cape and and then you also have the blue cloth wrapping around his shoulder and then his golden armor kind of as counterpart to the white fur on the left and when you look at him from the back you also have the blue part wrapping around his shoulder on the left and the white on the cape on the left and the purple smaller cape on the right and you also have these diamond shapes on his right outer leg whereas on the left outer leg you just have the hip accessoires and his vision while Kaya doesn't have a specific sword just for him, I mean for some Genshin characters you will even see them with their weapon for them in their card illustration, but yeah, here for Kaya I just picked out some swords that I thought would kind of fit to him. We have the Favonius sword, the Sword of Dissension, the Sacrificial sword, and the Quilia Favonia, which is a sword for the Knights of Favonius. And step 7 would be to finalize the colors. Now that everything is added, use your initial color block in and fill in the rest. As you're doing this, you can also refine your color palette. And here are some guides to keep in mind. As I said before, for small accessoires, pops of color work really well. Use gradients if it fits, especially for capes or longer outfit parts, or you can just divide them up using a pattern. Make sure to add gold or silver most of the time. Pair the colors with black, white, or brown often. You can use the same shade or hue, but include including a bit different values if you have overlapping outfit parts with the same color. For example, for Ether or the Luke, this is used. And make sure overlapping parts don't have the same value most of the time. And also, almost every character has black and white, or at least pretty dark and bright parts in their design, which means they have a lot of contrast. But a few characters that are kind of exceptions to this, who have almost no or no white parts in their design, would be Mona, New Villette, Ryothusli, Dane Sleeve, and Alhatham. And overall, you usually still have one or two main colors per character, fitting to their personality or theme and often their vision. And applying this to Kaya, you can see the points I mentioned overall applied for him. 
All right, and now you should have a character design. Finally, you can check these things and make some adjustments if you want to. First, we have uniqueness. Does the character stand out? Then we have visual storytelling. Does the design convey who the character is? Then we have contrast. Is there a good amount of contrast for the details, the colors, the values, and the shapes? And you can also make your design black and white. Check the silhouette and zoom out and see if it's still readable. Then you can also go back to your mood board and look for any references in your board you maybe have missed, so you really would like to include, but haven't already and finally you can go back to your initial idea and ask yourself if it's realized in the way you want and does it convey the character does it show their personality and lore and it's okay if it's different from the initial idea as long as you feel the design depicts who you want the character to be and for kaya does this fit for a eccentric mysterious charming beautiful pirate captain i'd say yes also what's pretty cool is that kaya has a second outfit for his sumaru design and here you can see how the character design steps would be applied if he was living in sumaru or just for a different kind of design. And that's it for the analysis part and the basic steps. You'll notice that the main thing about designing characters is about visual storytelling, which is making sure you are portraying who the character is through their design. And some choices can be made just because it looks nice and fits, but almost every choice you make should root back to who the character is and be based on who they are. You have this space on the character and are using it to convey who they are. You could also simplify the steps I described into four phases. First, you have the preparation phase with the idea and references, and you have the concept phase with the silhouette, the shapes and the color blocking. Then we have the designing phase with drawing the outfits and accessoires. And finally we have the evaluation phase with the final check. Okay and that will be it for this week's video. I find after hearing about a theory or steps like here, seeing it applied really helps to understand this better. If you want to see me apply these steps or also find out about drawing in the Genshin Impact art style, making illustrations like the card illustrations for the Genshin characters, you can look forward to my future videos. Genshin Impact is a big inspiration to me and I loved exploring it more for this video. I hope it was helpful to you. Bye!